welcome to another Teacher's Corner. I'm Teacher Kirby, and this episode we're going to be discussing the Lucari Restoration Initiative, or Lucari Reputation. So, like all other reputations, it has up to Tier 6. So let's dive into what we get each tier as far as our reputation traits. We have on for our ground traits for tier one, we get viral weapon overload. And that means when you critically hit an enemy, that's actually a good thing, uh, you additionally disable their weapons. Can occur once per 30 seconds. So that's actually the downside of this is that it can only happen once every 30 seconds. But it does happen when you critically hit which means it's likely to happen or have a chance to happen um, quite often. Our slippery target, you gain immunity to control effects for five seconds when you are the target of root hold disable or knock effect. This may occur once every 45 seconds. Again, that 45 second lockout is going to uh, make this not very useful. All right, moving right along, right along. Our second tier bonuses, this is for space. We have viral engine overload, very similar to the uh, weapons overload. When you critically strike an enemy, you additionally take their impulse engines offline and reduce their flight speed and turn rate can occur once every 30 seconds. Again, that 30 second lockout makes it not very useful. And then we have evasive tactics, very similar to our ground trait. Gain immunity to control effects for five seconds when you are the target of root hold, disable, or repel. And again, once every 45 seconds. That 45 second lockout makes this uh, limited on its usability or its uh, usefulness. Tier 3, we're back to ground traits. We have piezoelectric discharge. Words are hard. Piezoelectric discharge. And that gives a 10% chance for your weapons to cause an AoE shield drain centered on your primary target can occur once every 10 seconds. So this is much more useful, although not such a great trait, but at least more useful. And then we have our reactive protomatter infusion. And this has being critically hit will grant you a large increase to your health and shield regeneration rate for a short time. Uh, may occur once every 30 seconds. So this has a couple things. So first of all, it has a 30 second lockout, not so great. But the trigger for this to occur is you being critically hit. Your NPCs or the NPCs only have a 2.5% crit chance or critical chance. So they don't have a really good chance of critically hitting you. So not such a great trigger. So there you go. Uh, but when you do get critically hit, you would gain 16.1 shield regeneration every second for 15 seconds and plus 100% hit point regeneration per minute for 15 seconds. Okay, moving right along, right along, tier four. We have the piezoelectric weapon amplification, and this has a 5% chance for your weapons to cause an AOE shield drain uh, centered on your primary target. Can occur once every 10 seconds, and if you look, the shield drain is actually quite minimal. Minus 64.4 all shields. Actually, that's misreading, misleading because I'm on the ground. So that's actually going to be much higher once I get into space. But this can happen once every 10 seconds. And then we have automated protomatter conduits. 
being critically hit will grant you a large increase to your hull and shield regeneration rate for a short time may occur once every 30 seconds. Again, these numbers are a bit misleading because I am on the ground. Um, but you get some extra shield regeneration and extra hull regeneration for 15 seconds. But again, you need to be critically hit in order for that to trigger. So limited in its usefulness. And then we have our tier 5, which is a ground trait. And it is piezoelectric perimeter snare. And this gives you a patch of volatile electricity at the target. Uh, so it damages and roots your foes. Any foes who move into the snare will be slowed down. And all targets caught in it will receive electrical burns. So it deals damage over time. As you can see, uh, it creates the snare for 10 seconds deals an amount of electrical damage which has 50% shield penetration and uh, gives extra damage to electronics but it holds them in place for 9.3 seconds uh, slows down their run speed and target is affected or afflicted with electrical burns so there you go and has a 10% chance to expose pretty devastating attack so actually something to consider for your ground tunes or for your when you're playing ground and then of course tier 6 puts all of these up to rank 2 in their effectiveness which gives them an extra 25% on their effective um, on their effectiveness so there you go all right moving right along right along right along we have of course when we reach tier six we can claim a fleet ship module a retrain token vanity shield and our hourly um hourly mission here all right for our ground, we have our combat armor, which is gives a moderate amount of physical damage resistance, a decent amount of kinetic and energy damage resistance, back down to moderate for tetrion, radiation, root, and knockback resistance, and a plus 46% health regeneration and 8.4 shield regen every second. All right. And this is part of our three piece ground set. For our personal shield, we have some more root resistance and knockback resistance. We have a 280 shield capacity, decent amount, has a bit of bleed through which all shields do and of course our normal rapidly regenerates after not taking damage for three seconds also has a 28.1 uh, shield capacity for regeneration 28.1 uh, shield capacity every two seconds okay um, so when taking damage while your shields are below 25% your shield generates a protomatter coalescence, which gives you and your allies within three meters shield regeneration for 10 seconds, 50% hit point regeneration per minute for 10 seconds. And, but this can only occur once every 45 seconds. So it is not a constant thing. And this shield reduces all energy damage to shields by 10%. And it reduces specifically Tetrion damage to shields by 20%. Okay, moving right along, right along, right along. Then we have our weapon, 
and remember there's when you reach um oh, never mind okay then we have our piezoelectric wrist apparatus and this has this gets two percent bonus all damage when you reach tier six but it does electrical damage uh, has a 25% damage to electrical targets, electronic targets, uh, extra, and has a 66% chance to chain to a nearby target for a small amount of electrical damage, actually a large amount of electrical damage, and a 33% chance to chain to an additional uh, to chain an additional time to another nearby target for an even larger amount of electrical damage. So you can chain to an additional two targets and the amount of damage increases each time. Plus there is a 5% chance to apply to yourself a protomatter regenerative influx which gives you plus 9.8 shield regeneration every 10 seconds and 150% hit point regeneration for 10 seconds. As you can see, these, uh, these pieces are all about giving you shield regen and health regen or hit point regen, which is quite good for uh, someone who's trying to tank. So these are definitely pieces you might consider if you are looking at trying to tank. Plus this gives a 20% chance crit severity because you do have a critical damage mod uh, baked in to this. Uh, your secondary fire is your electronic discharge and this gives a larger electrical damage to start and has a 25% chance to hold target for five seconds and to electronic targets has a and this has a five percent chance to target to disable ranged weapons for five seconds and of course has a 25 20% 20 crit severity because of that crit severity mod all right, moving right along, right along, right along. We have our science kit module, and that is the piezoelectric lattice. And that is, actually, before we do that, I almost forgot to talk about the three-piece set bonus. What is with me today? All right, our three-piece set bonus. First of all, this does unlock a costume once you get all three pieces of the set. But our two-piece set bonus is a passive. It is called Advanced Support Methodology. It gives a passive plus 25% electrical damage. If you are doing a lot of electrical damage, which you would be if you are using these weapons, the weapons that come with this, then this is one of the only ways you're going to get a bonus or a boost to it. Uh, so plus 25% electrical damage and plus 25% outgoing healing bonus. So again, another bonus to healing for those that are wanting to heal or tank. And then we have our three piece set bonus the Lucari Proto Energy Mastery. This is another passive. It gives you a chance when taking damage while shields are active to convert 10% of incoming damage for five seconds into shield healing. So this is kind of like reverse shield polarity, but for the ground. Um, and your chance for this to happen increases as your shield decreases. This can occur once every 30 seconds. All right. And then we have uh, 
Okay, so we have our, let's continue, we have our science kit module. This is available, or listed here, because this is a science character. So we have our piezoelectric lattice. Now this has an AOE, or area of effect, electrical DOT, or damage over time, and can has a root chance, in other words, a chance to hold your your target in place for weapon mount and chance for rep dead, dead, dead. Root, which means it'll hold in place and a chance for weapon malfunction. Goodness gracious, words are hard today. Alright. To your foe, it gives 36.6, which is a moderate amount of electrical damage per second for 10 seconds. With 50% shield penetration, that means it'll go through and ignore shields for half of the shields. Alright, and it will root or hold in place the target for 12.2 seconds. That's a pretty good root chance, or root uh, duration. And it has a 33% chance to give a weapon malfunction for 5.5 seconds. The duration is doubled versus electronics. So, that means it'll be 10 or almost 11 whole seconds for electronics. And it has a 17.9 second recharge, which means it recharges pretty quickly. But, uh, so there you go. Not a bad little thing if you're looking to uh, disable your enemies. All right. And, but then we also have our tactical and engineering modules. So let's take a look at what they are. For our tactical kit modules, we have piezoelectric grenade. And this has another AOE kinetic damage and electric, um, damage over time and a chance for hold. So it's pretty similar to the science console. When you throw a grenade at a target, you do kinetic damage instead of electrical damage and with 50% shield penetration and the damage reduces from the center of where your grenade hits. Uh, you also do an electric damage over time for five seconds with 50% shield penetration. And uh, this does another 25% added damage to electronics. Your enemy has, you have a 50% chance to hold your target for four seconds with the grenade. All right, moving right along, right along, we have our engineering kit module, which is a protomatter generator drone. And this has, it is a health and shield regeneration drone. When you activate it, it generates a protomatter drone for 120 seconds. In other words, two minutes. Your allies within the drone's effective radius, which is four and a half meters, will receive plus hit points per second and plus shield regeneration per second and the effects of the protomatter generator drones cannot be stacked. They do not apply to fabrications. So this only applies to your actual uh, player character allies or NPC allies. So if you're, for example, doing a mission and have your bridge officers, it would apply to your bridge officers, but not to your um, but not to any fabrications you do as an engineer. So there you go. It gives healing and shield regeneration, which again, good for those that are wanting to do a more of a support role on the ground. Okay. Now let's take a look at our space things we have here. Our first one is the console, and that is the piezoelectric focuser. So this gives 30% plasma damage. Plasma is the 
secondary damage for the Lucari reputation and 30% Polaron damage that is the primary damage meaning that's what you get before you hit tier 6 and then we have our 15% flight turn rate and 15% maximum shield capacity so and then we have for our weapon part of the set we have there's going to be dual cannons both plasma and polaron remember polaron is what you'll see if you have not reached tier six yet plasma is only unlocked when you reach tier six and same thing with the beam arrays you'll have a plasma and a polaron if you have reached tier six if not you will have only Polaron. Let's take a look. They all have the same stats or similar stats. Uh, the cannons are going to do slightly different amounts of damage, but there you go. All right. So for our Polaron array, and we do Polaron damage. If you're looking at the plasma array, it would do plasma damage. Uh, it subtracts 10 weapon power when you're using the weapon. And But it has. Here's the special thing to it. 5% chance to apply the proto matter regeneration influx to self and nearby allies. This gives a 282.6 shield regeneration each second for 10 seconds. Of course this is uh, modified because I'm on the ground. It would look different in space. So an amount of shield regeneration each second for 10 seconds and allows you to regenerate 2.5 percent of your max hull for 10 seconds so this is actually a pretty good um, proc especially if you're looking to do a support role so this might be something you consider if you're running polaron or plasma if you're using the uh, plasma variant on your um, on your ship. It also has uh, crit d3 as its mod, crit d times 3, so this gives 60% crit severity, which is actually pretty good on your modifiers. Then we have our torpedo, the third part of the armaments set, and the torpedo its special thing it's a photon torpedo so it'll recharge pretty quickly but its special thing is it gives it has a 15 percent chance excuse the dogs a 15 percent chance to apply piezoelectric shield flux 15% chance, excuse me, dogs have me flustered. There we go, applies 15, applies piezoelectric shield flux. <laughs> All right, now that we have settled the dogs, let's try this again. We have 15% chance to apply the piezoelectric shield flux to enemies within 2.5 kilometers of the target and that shield flux gives minus 20% shield hardness for 10 seconds and minus 264.3 all shields and that is of course to our enemies so that reduces how hard their shields are which makes it easier for us to kill them and reduces how many shields they have it also prevents Zenkethi from creating warp core hazards when they die for 10 seconds every time it hits. Okay, so moving right along, right along. Oh, let's forget before I forget. Let's take a look at those set powers. So for our two-piece set power, we get an additional 15% plasma, photon and polaron weapon damage 
so it does boost all three, plus an additional 20%, or 20, not 20%, just 20, Starship Drain Expertise, which improves how much energy and shield drains out of our enemies and gives us resistance. Our three-piece set bonus is Protomatter Infused Torpedoes. So this only affects torpedoes. It only affects, in fact, it only affects the high yield version of the piezo photon torpedoes. So it doesn't affect any other torpedoes except the one that comes from the rep. And it even has to be high yield for that. So if your high yield advanced piezo photon torpedo is shot down, before reaching the target, it will spawn a protomatter hazard that grants allied players a hull and shield regeneration boost for flying into it. And it will give plus 15 starship hull restoration and plus 15 starship shield restoration as well. All right, so the active only affects the piezo photon torpedo and only affects it if it's high yield at that. So fairly limited usefulness, but it does give a passive bonus to hull restoration and shield restoration. All right, now moving right along, right along to our Starship Technologies. This is the deflector impulse engines, uh, warp core, singularity core, and shields. All right, so let's take a look. This is where we're gonna start seeing a lot of drain expertise. So we have resistance to radiation damage, uh, hull restoration, shield restoration, large amount of shield restoration at that, and uh, small amount of drain expertise. Okay, and then we have for our uh, impulse engines, we have a small amount of kinetic resistance, kinetic damage resistance, a uh, decent amount of flight speed and flight turn rate. And it's important to remember combat impulse engines are faster than other engines while at low engine power. Okay, and then we have our reactive engine technologies. And this means when you're taking more than 25% of max hull within five seconds, that means when you have everybody wailing on you and you lose one quarter of your hull in five seconds, then you get plus 200% flight speed and plus 200% turn rate for six seconds. That means you get a big boost of flight speed and turn rate. Um, it also lets you regenerate 2% max haul per second for six seconds. But this can only occur once every 60 seconds. So it has limited usefulness for getting to the next point in a um, in a match or a TFO. Okay, and at full power you gain, of course, uh, one hundred plus one hundred twenty-two point seven flight speed. Okay, then we have our warp slash singularity core. We're gonna go over each one. So with our warp core, we get additional shield power. We get additional aux power. We get maximum shield power, which means we can now take our shield power up to 130. We get maximum aux power, which means we can now take our auxiliary power up to 130. And our maximum warp factor is 9.97. This is of course normal. Plus we add 7.5% of our aux power to our shield power as bonus power. We also get uh, starship hull restoration and 
plus 20% slipstream speed. So as we can see, this is also boosting our hull restoration. As with the ground abilities, this is going to be good for somebody looking to do a support role. With our Singularity Core, oh, almost forgot. We have the point jump ability on the Warp Core, and that gives us the ability to teleport four kilometers in front of our target and gives uh, a little bit of stealth and roots for one second. If we have the four piece set bonus, it also gives us some temporary hit points and gives our enemies within five kilometers uh, subtract some shield resistance for 10 seconds. It also, if we have the four piece bonus, reduces the recharge from four minutes down to two minutes. All right, now we can talk about the Singularity Core. The Singularity Core gives us between plus five to 12.5 shield power based on our singular Singularity Charge level. Same thing for our Ox Power, again, based on Singularity Charge level. Uh, same thing with the maximum warp factor, norm, normal speed, and it reduces the cooldown time on our Singularity power use by 10%. Also gives us 20% slipstream speed and 35 starship, heal, starship shield restoration. Man, words are hard today. And it improves our Singularity shielding meaning our quantum absorption also provides us with 20 resistance to all damage. All right, and it has the same point jump as the warp core with all of the same effects. All right, moving right along, right along, we have our, finally we have our shields and with our shields, we have a 8,721.7 max shield capacity. Of course, that's going to be affected by your skill points if you have points in shields. Then we have 277.6 uh, shield regeneration every six seconds. This again will be affected by points you've spent. And it reduces all energy damage to shields by 10% and specifically Tetrion damage to shields by 20%. Uh, it also has the ability to apply shield over regenerative shield overflow to yourself and allies within 2.5 kilometers once every six seconds. Now I know it says here zero shield regeneration, which is obviously a typo. So if there are any devs watching, Get that fixed, please. And uh, the range, the effective range of this is modified by the three piece set bonus, uh, supercharged shield emitters. We'll talk about that in just a minute. All right. So now let's talk about our set bonuses here. So we have for the Starship uh, Technologies, our two piece set bonus, Rapid Restorative Technologies, gives a 10% recharge time reduction on hull and shield healing bridge officer abilities. So again, this is favoring those that are trying to do a support role or a healing role or a tanking role. Our three piece set bonus, Supercharged Shield Emitters, gives us plus 20 Starship Drain Expertise and Regenerative Shield Overflow, which increases the increased range from two and a half kilometers to five kilometers. Okay, and then we have our Enhanced Point jump for our four piece set bonus 
which we kind of talked about already a little bit, but we'll go over it anyway. This gives the enhanced point jump, gives plus 20 starship shield restoration as a passive. So again, favoring those that are looking to tank or do a support role. And then we have the point jump, which reduces the recharge of the point jump from four minutes down to two minutes. It also adds the effect of your enemies within five kilometers. They get a reduction of their shield hardness for 10 seconds. And to yourself, you gain temporary hit points for 10 seconds. So again, this, um, this entire uh, reputation seems to favor those looking for a support role or a uh, tanking role. So something to consider if you're looking for those effects. You might want to play with how these play off of each other or other um, abilities and pieces from other sets. So there you go, Lucari Restoration Initiative. And uh, this is Teacher Kirby. I hope you've learned something and I'll see you next time.